Welcome to r slash Petty Revenge, where we share stories of small victories over those who have wronged you. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. And today's first story is, treat me like my boss's secretary? Let's see how that goes for you. A couple years ago, I worked for a small team within a large organization that ran a rather niche grant program. It was literally my boss, let's call him Charles, me, and two part-time consultants who did our finances and bookkeeping. My boss and I had a great rapport. He hired me to essentially run large aspects of our program and gave me pretty much unilateral oversight of the key elements of it, from program design and development to execution. He was a great manager in this respect. He provided a lot of mentoring and guidance, but mostly got out of my way and only wanted me to escalate the big stuff that I felt rose to the level. While I didn't love the job itself, I loved having so much freedom. I was sort of bridging that gap of moving from a young professional into a mid-career professional, and so this offered a lot of growth opportunities. One thing that made my boss great was that he always had my back. One day I was in the office pretty much alone. My boss was on the board of a few orgs, and he was off at a half-day meeting. Our offices were right across from each other, so I could typically see him when he came and left, and I could hear his phone when it rang. That morning his phone was ringing and ringing and ringing. Then finally my phone rang. It was the executive director, ED from here on out, of one of the organizations we worked with, an older man maybe in his 70s. The conversation went something like this. Me, Ouroboros13 speaking, how can I help you? ED, I've been calling Charles all morning but he's not answering. Me, yes he's at a half day board meeting, is there something I can help you with? ED, I doubt it, maybe you could just check his calendar and put a call with me on there for when he's back? Me, I'm sorry, I wish I could but I don't have access to his calendar, so I can't see what he has in the afternoon and I can't add things to his calendar, I'm sure he'll be back soon. ED, cuts me off. That's unacceptable. How does his secretary not have access to his calendar? Who sets his meetings? Now, here's the thing. While I am my boss's employee, I'm not his secretary. I don't have access to his calendar and my boss sets his own meetings. Not only that, but I had corresponded with and even met this ED in the past. My signature block and business card clearly say program manager, as does my bio on our webpage. Alas, this wasn't the first time someone had assumed that I was my boss's secretary. It happens. I was in my late 20s at the time and as a young professional woman working for a man, it seemed a common misconception. Usually it's not a big deal. Normally I clarify my role and people feel a little embarrassed and we go on about our lives. So I clarified my role for the ED. Me, just to clarify, I'm not Charles' secretary. He doesn't have a secretary. I'm actually the program manager. Charles manages his schedule on his own. If you want to shoot us both an email, I'll make sure that he responds and sets up a time to talk to you. Otherwise, when he comes back, I'll let him know you called so you can arrange a meeting. ED cuts me off again. Well, I have an important question for him, and it's unacceptable that I can't set up a meeting with him, and I also can't get an answer to it right away. How is this good client service? Me. Well, you know, I am the program manager. Why don't you tell me what your question is about, and let's see if I can help you. The ED explained that he called to talk about the application process and requirements for a program of ours, one that I actually ran. Not only that, but the nature of his questions were not so complicated that it necessitated escalating to my boss. These were things I could easily help him with. Me. Well, you're in luck. I'm actually the one who runs that program, not Charles. I've designed that application process, and I would actually be able to answer your questions with a lot more detail than Charles would. He would just defer you to me. Why don't you tell me what questions you have and I can answer them? ED. Young lady, I'm sure you're very bright and I'm sure you want to be helpful, but I'd really prefer to talk to Charles. Why don't you just take a message for him from me, okay? Now, I'm kind of peeved. I'm about to tell him where he can shove his message when I see my boss coming down the hallway. So I tell the ED that he's in luck. I see Charles now. Let me go tell him you're on the line and get back to you. So I put the ED on hold and intercept my boss. I kinda explain the situation. My boss chuckles to himself and says, transfer him over. I transfer the call and I can hear my boss pick up the phone. Charles, Chuck speaking. Oh, hi there, ED. How can I help you? Yes, uh-huh. Yes, I was at a half-day board meeting. You have a question about which program? Okay, what's your question? Uh-huh. You want to know about the application process and criteria? Uh-huh. Okay, well, have you spoken to my program manager, Ouroboros13? Well, she's actually the one who manages that program. Yes, she actually designed the application process. Sorry, ED, I wouldn't be able to answer that specific question. No, I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that. Yes, that's right, Ouroboros13 manages that entire program, and she's really the expert on it. Let me go see if she's in her office. I hear my boss put the phone on hold. He takes a long pause before he gets back on. Charles, I'm sorry, ED, but it appears she must have stepped away from her desk. Why don't you send her an email and I'm sure she'll get back to you. No, again, I'm sorry, but she's really leading on that program, so you'll have to speak with her. I could transfer you to her voicemail if you wish. 
No? Okay. Do you have her email? Great, so send her an email and I'm sure she'll get back to you on all your questions ASAP. The ED didn't email me for a couple days, and when he finally did, I helpfully walked him through all the details of the program he was interested in. The second story is, call me names and intimidate me at work? I'll humiliate you in front of a shop full of people. So this story happened one summer when I was younger and working in a mini supermarket type shop. The place I come from is by the coast and attracts a lot of tourists over the summer who unfortunately tend to be rude, noisy, and as my un-PC grandfather would say, common as muck. Despite the poor pay and rude customers I enjoyed the job, it was pretty easy, a relaxed environment and the other staff were all great. Plus it was money for university, so I was happy for the work. One particular afternoon I was working on the till point at the front of the shop when a huge man in a wife beater vest who looked in his mid-thirties stormed in. Mind you, he wasn't fat, but he must have been about 6'4", absolutely ripped in muscles, covered in tattoos with a clean-shaven head. He was closely followed by a group of about four other men, who all looked very similar, albeit with varying amounts of hair, and a particularly smug-looking bleach blonde woman hanging on his arm. Myself being a 22-year-old, 5'6", skinny girl, it was initially somewhat intimidating, especially the attitude they stormed in with. The bold man made a straight line for the counter, barging straight past an elderly couple on the way up to the till and physically elbowing a woman with a pushchair out of his way. When he reached the counter, he leaned over me and slammed the object in his hand straight down on the desk. It was a jar of the supermarket's own brand salsa dip. Before I had a chance to ask him what was wrong, he moved his face closer to mind. This effing jar you sell has been fused shut and won't effing open. I want my effing money back and some compensation for having to drive all the effing way back to your SH shop, he yelled straight into my face. What's wrong with it, sorry? I asked quietly, a bit confused about the anger over a jar of dip. Pretty much everybody in the shop had stopped what they were doing at this point, and I felt all their gazes as they looked over. Open your effing ears, B. It won't effing open, he yelled back. Now, this made me angry. If somebody approached me nicely, I'd always do my best to help them out. But coming right in my face, yelling, calling me names, and swearing was not okay. My boss was out on his lunch, and the only other people working were a 17-year-old girl, Chloe and Lewis, who was shorter and skinnier than me. I knew I had to deal with this by myself. Would you like me to try and open it? I offered. He and his friends started laughing, and his girlfriend gave me a pitying look. No offense, love, but if I can't open it, some effing P Southern B ain't gonna. I heard a small gasp from the elderly woman. See, this made me more mad. While I may not be big and intimidating, I quite regularly get referred to as feisty by my best friends and a string of ex-boyfriends, not always in a complimentary way. Also, being a small woman lacking muscle and having lived on my own since the age of 18, I was well aware of all the little tricks of opening something which didn't want to budge without any help. No, let me try. I shot at him, finding some confidence. He laughed. Stupid B, he muttered to the vapid blow-up doll in his arm. She giggled. I took the jar and gently tapped the rim on the edge of the counter, looking him in the eye the entire time. One, two, three. All of the group sneered and were laughing. I lifted up the jar and without breaking eye contact, gently twisted the lid. It popped right open. The laughing abruptly stopped. What the? One of his mates muttered. They all looked at their big bold friend and started to laugh. The girl on his arm sharply detached herself and started giggling hysterically. You're the effing P, mate, one howled. That lass is a quarter year size, another ribbed. He nervously glanced around. Not only were his friends in hysterics, but everybody in the shop was looking over, nudging one another and laughing at him. Slowly his face went bright red, with the color stretching all the way up to his bald head, as he realized what an idiot I'd made him look. He shot his hand forward and grabbed the jar. The lid wasn't attached and fell off onto the floor. He quickly ducked down and grabbed it. As he got up, visibly humiliated, he grabbed his girl by the hand and practically ran towards the door, shoulders hunched and head down. But just as he reached the door and looked back at his friends, I raised my hand, put on the biggest FU retail fake smile I could muster and yelled out, enjoy your dip, in a cheery voice. Another wave of laughter erupted from the shop and he dashed straight out. And the last story is, I'm sick and I can't go home early. You aren't sick and you go home early? Okay. Former military, so no kidding, there I was. Monday through Friday I was coming in prior to 6am for physical training. Work call was 9am. I would shower at the gym and be at work well before 9am. I had been working late, 8pm, and coming in on Saturdays and the occasional Sunday, in order to keep up with the workload. I'm not inefficient. After I left, two people did the job I was doing by myself. We were supposed to get flu shots, but there was a shortage or some nonsense, and we didn't get them in a timely fashion. Other units got them before we did, because of reason one, reason two, whatever. So, my spouse is a nurse. Much like a kindergarten teacher, my spouse gets sick frequently from all the sick people she's exposed to. Of course, everything that she gets, I get. Anyway, I was feeling really ill. I was obviously running a fever and doing poorly. I knew I was contagious. I asked my boss if I could go home early and come in late the next day because of how awful I felt. Did I already mention my hours? Yes, I did. Also, he generally skipped physical training, came in late and left early. 
I was okay with that, but if I ask for a few hours off, it shouldn't be a big deal. He said no, an emphatic no. Then he went home early. Okay, cool, no worries. I stuck it out. I continued on the same work schedule as always. His boss, my senior boss, noticed that I was moving slowly, has a winter coat on indoors and was coughing, and asked me why I was at work if I was so sick. He saw I was sweating and had chills. He wanted to know why I was risking getting everyone else sick. I told my senior boss that I asked to go home early but I was denied. He asked where my immediate boss was, and I told him that my immediate boss had left for the day. My senior boss stared at me for a moment and then said, duly noted, please tell Major ABC to see me tomorrow, and Roger. By the way, my senior boss had deployed with me and knew my work ethic. Did I mention that my immediate boss had an official photo scheduled for early next week, as well as an interview for a very prestigious nominative position? Immediately before I went home and as gross as this sounds, I went into his office and did the following. 1. I licked his phone. 2. I licked his computer mouse. 3. I jumped up and down until I was able to violently cough on his keyboard, doorknob, pens, and armrests on his chair. Then I went home. Fast forward a few days. Guess who got sick with the flu that weekend? Yep, my immediate boss. He asked his boss, my senior boss, for some time off to get ready for his interview, to get ready for his photo, and to regain some stamina due to his illness. My senior boss talked to him, and from what I could gather, he told my immediate boss that if his troopers were so critical to this mission that they couldn't go home if they were sick, then so was he. My boss was absolutely miserable, looked horrible in his photo, and bombed his interview. They called my senior boss and asked why he was working when he was sick, and my senior boss told them that my boss insisted that everyone work, no matter how sick they were. Fast forward a few weeks or so. I was fully recovered and feeling good. My boss was almost recovered. I asked him how the interview went, and if he got the position. I got the death stare. I think he knew that I knew and suspected that I got him sick, but screw him for being a jerk when he didn't need to be. Thanks for watching. Bye.